Our study was aimed to evaluate all the studies that have ever been published in the literature, evaluating the relationship between uh, uh, diabetes, uh, usually di mainly diabetes type 2, and, and, and the incidence or the, the, the risk of developing blood cancers. So um, our study basically found that in patients with type 2 diabetes, when they are compared to patients without diabetes, the risk of lymphoma, leukemia, and myeloma, which are the main blood cancers that we have, increases by approximately 20%. When you look at it uh, as just 20% increase, it doesn't seem to be uh, a, a significant increase. But when you go and look at the number of patients who actually have diabetes in the United States, around 11 to 13% of the whole population, and that's not having into account the individuals who do have diabetes that have not been diagnosed yet. So when we look at the, uh, at, at the risk based on, on, on those numbers, we can say that diabetes uh, could be associated to um, at least 5% of all the uh, um, blood cancers happening in the United States and in, in the rest of the world. So by preventing the onset of diabetes, we could be decreasing uh, those, those, the incidence of those cancers as well. We know already that by preventing diabetes, we will have other uh, health uh, improvements, including uh, heart status, cholesterol, you know, things, uh, obesity, weight loss, and things like that. And, and but, but I think in the in the in the mind of the of the general population of the of the general public, uh, you know, decreasing cancers is not part of of what we expect by by decreasing uh, the incidence of diabetes. So, if, but I think that that is starting to change. We're starting to realize that is some, that an additional benefit that we can obtain from uh, controlling diabetes. There are many behavioral factors that play into becoming diabetic or developing cancer. And we're talking about, you know, as, as we grow older, for example, you are more likely to develop diabetes and cancer. Uh, uh, smoking and alcohol intake and obesity and lack of activity, them, all those are factors for diabetes, but also there are factors for, for cancer. So how do, how do we differentiate between the two of them? So that's, that's I think, where, where our research should go into.